1971 was a year of major changes in NASCAR. The days of the factory teams were over for the most part. Only Petty Enterprises had Chrysler money behind it, and Ford had withdrawn its backing from everyone. Sponsors would have to be found elsewhere, and the first big one to step up was the Reynolds Tobacco Company. The NASCAR Grand National Championship would now be known as the Winston Cup. The winged cars, so prominent in 1970, were now limited to a 305 cubic inch engine, and only one was entered in 1971. The fastest qualifier, A.J. Foyt, was more than 11 miles per hour slower than Cale Yarborough was the year before. The reason? For the first time in the Daytona 500, restrictor plates were employed to keep speeds down. Everybody up for the start of this one. Two and a half miles, paved tri -oval. And it's green, here we go. Bobby Isaac edging to the front at the start. It's gotta be some moment, Pete, barreling into that first turn, not knowing what the other fellow's gonna do. And look at that, three wide in the second row, and it's still a battle for the number one position. As they come off turn two, it's A.J. Foyt in the 69 Mercury, the pole center, taking the lead on the first run through the back straight. Richard Petty moves up in the second place. It looks as though it's going to be another battle of the brands of Mercury and a Plymouth, first and second here. Early in the race, as Foyt fought off several challengers, rookie Maynard Troyer provided the first caution of the day in spectacular fashion. On turn two, we've got a wreck. Look at that. Wow. What a crash, Pete. I don't think I've ever seen one this bad. Looks like a Ford. Car number 60. 1969 winner Leroy Yarbrough took the lead, but his day would end early as well. Here's Leroy Yarbrough, former winner, coming down off the track and a fire underneath that Mercury. Fire under Leroy's car. Fire down below. He's going to bail out of this one, and here come the fire crews. He's got his fireproof suit on, and he's concerned now about saving the car. Next to drop out was Cale Yarborough. Here's that on problems all day. We kept, kept, cutting, kept cutting down tires all day, but just wasn't our day. Dick Brooks in the winged Dodge Daytona was making a race of it, even with its relatively small engine. Brooks led four different times during the race. 1970 winner Pete Hamilton, now driving for Cotton Owens, was among the front runners as well. Then they got a little too close. Here's the mini motor, Richard Brooks now up there battling for first place. Remarkable uh, combination of car and driver doing a fine job at AJ. Oh! That's Brooks and Hamilton! Wow, A.J. Foyt went by Brooks on the inside, so close that the draft upset the uh, traction of number 22. He bobbled, Hamilton was so close that he tapped him, and now they're both proceeding slowly around the track with damage to their car. Not bad, however, and the Porsche Pace car goes out as the yellow light blinks on one more time. Both would continue the race, but Hamilton eventually retired. Now, five drivers were positioning themselves to win. Foyt maintained the speed he had shown in qualifying. Buddy Baker, always fast, was in the second petty car. King Richard was there, biding his time. Donnie Allison and David Pearson completed the group. A.J. was leading with less than 40 laps to go when he suddenly slowed. And Foyt drops back. Foyt goes down low, and he has slowed down. A.J. Foyt is dropping back, back, back. Oh, he's in trouble. It appears to be as though he's coasting. Yes, he is. He's coasting. It could be a number of things. Now let's watch what happens in the pits as Pearson is going to be quick out. Penny will be quick out. And here comes A.J. Foyt. They're going right to work. And A.J.'s not getting out of the car. Apparently he's out of gas. They're changing the right side tire. He rode a silent mount into the pit, so the engine was not running, and obviously that's what's happened. They tried to stretch it just a little too far. At least you'd have to guess that. A few laps later, Donnie Allison was up front when another episode of Daytona 500 frustration played out. Here comes A.J. trying now, and A.J. pulls it off, or just about pulls it off. And when he gets by Baker, if that yellow light should light, why, he'll have that lap back. And of course, with just a few laps left, it's an unlikely possibility, but A.J. never quit. Boyd kept pushing. He finally worked his way back to the lead lap, but only a caution would allow him to close the gap. 
where he finds the speed. He wants it, he gets it, and now he's taking that lap back. He's in the same lap now with the leaders, though he's got a long way to go to race with them. And Richard Petty doesn't want to let him get away. He's trying to hang on. The final duel would be between the two Petty teammates. Richard Petty, Buddy Baker, 1-2, A.J. Foyt running just in front of him. The better part of the race course behind. He is in third place. So this is a moment when it's literally nothing but a, a moment of nerve for all those along pit road that labored to make these cars run so well today. And certainly I'm sure that Richard Petty has his task well in mind and well in hand as Buddy Baker now in second place has dropped well back. He's back about 12, 13 seconds. Baker apparently uh, having a little trouble handling his car. You know, the Daytona Speedway, there's a history of things happening. Uh, races being won and races being lost on the last lap. Look at that. Crossed fingers in the Buddy Baker pit. I'll tell you, the last race we saw here a year ago when Pete Hamilton won, he won it in the last gasp. And here we go for the white flag. And the final exciting moment, the 13th Daytona 500. It looks like at this point it's going to be Petty, Baker, and Boyd. A.J. has made a great drive, and Richard Petty is unable to catch him. At least A.J. Foyt is winning this last, last drive. He, he won't win the race. He just can't win it. Richard is right there behind him, and A.J. has shown him some speed. He's shown him some class all day long. But Petty, the great Southern stock car driver, coming around now will take the checkered flag for his an unprecedented third Daytona 500 triumph, making him a man among men in stock car racing. And now for the flag in his 120th career victory as A.J. takes the white seat. Richard Petty's 120 wins were more than any other driver has to this day, and another 80 would come before he retired. It was his third Daytona 500 victory, and his domination of the race would continue. The men who battled in 1971 would continue to test each other well into the next decade.